Thanks for rejoining us. I hope you uh, enjoyed our earlier segment with uh, Dr. Derek Johnson. It, it, it's just so important for us to stay solution focused and, and there's solutions. There's solutions, there's solutions to all these challenges out there and sometimes um, stumbling blocks turn into stepping stones and we got another exciting guest with us and, and I really love the title of this book. Uh, Everybody has a story. This is mine by Marcus Jones. Brother Jones, I want to thank you for coming on and, and sharing with us. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Good to see you. Good Likewise. to see you. Heard nothing but good things uh, about you. And and I think that I'm looking at this title that everybody has a story. This is mine. I'm glad that you wrote your story because uh, it's inspiration to me. And I was talking to Dr. Derek Johnson earlier, and he made a comment about the most e expensive and most valuable real estate on the planet, mm. and most people don't think of it as this, is a cemetery. Mm. You know how many books people have gone to the cemetery with these books in them? Yes. And never got a chance to share uh, their story uh, with us. So we got shortchanged <laughs> by all those people. So I'm glad that you didn't shortchange us and made a decision to uh, write this book. W what was your inspiration uh, for, for writing this particular? Did you uh, have a turning point in your life where you felt as though you needed to share your story? Uh, yes. Um, one of the reasons why I wrote this book is uh, for my children. Um, I see that uh, being a dad and having children grow up uh, it, it, it changed you as a person as and also as a as a parent um, because there's so many things out here and with society and 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 just trying to uh, mold your children you know uh, the way they want them to but uh, you are supposed to mold your children the way you want to okay and then do you lead by example yes uh, for them to give them some kind of guidelines a model act as a model yes. for them to, to positive behaviors. And where did you go to high school? I went to uh, Kenwood Academy. And where year did you graduate? 89. In 89. So I, I, I noticed in the book you played football? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Played football my senior year. Uh, pretty good at it, you know. Um, a lot of tension on the football team. Really? And, yes, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot of tension. Yes. Between the players or? or um, Players, the school, um, okay. the coach, okay, uh, and um, other schools. And as staying well. in that winning mode too yes. has a lot has a lot to do with it. So you graduated from Kenwood, grew up on the South Side. Grew up on the South Side uh, uh, in a community called the Jeffrey Manor for okay. over uh, 25 years of my life. Uh, now that's over that 95th East, East of Jeffrey. East of Jeffrey. Okay, uh, you can get lost up in there. You can because it's a maze up in that area okay. over there. Okay. So, it, you know, one thing I, I, I uh, uh, noticed when you said everybody has a story, so you say part of your inspiration was that you wanted to leave some information in writing, I guess, yes. rather than just telling these stories to you. How many children do you have? Uh, I have four children, okay. uh, three girls, one boy. And what's the ages? Um, my oldest one just made 17. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, 14. My boy is 13, and my youngest is uh, 12. Okay, so when you, when you, you, did you go to Kenwood all four years? No, uh, actually, I went to Hales Franciscan my first two years. Okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, you have to pay for that and financial problems. We couldn't afford it. So uh, I transferred to a public school, which was not too far from Hales Franciscan. Right. Which is uh, Kenwood Academy. Okay. So you, you a good student anyway. Well, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Cause I mean, cause for you to get in the hells, I, I don't know what grammar school you went to prior. Did you go to Catholic school prior to that? No, no, public I went to uh, public school. Okay, so you you went to Kenwood, played football. So what was your goals and aspirations? Cause here talking success, we 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 try to bring people to, like yourself to come on to share your story. And mm -hmm. our definition of success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If you set a goal and then set up the objectives to get to the goal, mm -hmm. it don't have nothing to do with money right. necessarily. As a matter of fact, it's better to set it up where money is not 
the primary focus mm -hmm. because if you if you're moving in the right direction step by step you you will have some success yes and oftentimes success the money is the the is the byproduct of people's success mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you can't get paid for you produce the book you got to sell a million copies right, right. <laughs> or make right. 25 cent a copy right. so right. then you know you made yourself 250,000 you know right. that's how it go you don't get the money first right. you just don't get the money first um so what were some of the goals and, and things that you wanted to do? And then that later we'll see how did it, how, what Marcus thought was gonna happen. Okay. And then look at what we call like being in the matrix, you know, the real world, and yes. then you're in the matrix, you know, how did things turn out uh, for you? Yes, well, uh, when I uh, entered uh, high school, uh, my first two years at uh, Hales Franciscan, um, I had uh, big goals. Um, I can, my art was my thing. Uh, I won third place in the city um, my freshman year. Okay. And um, swimming, I don't know how that would have tied in, but you know, it was a curriculum. Um, and also um, reading. Uh, I used to read a lot. Oh, really? Uh, yes. But uh, when I got to uh, transfer it over to Kenwood and, and didn't have that, uh, discipline, as you would call like one-on-one -on -one teaching, as they do in Hales Franciscan. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit more loose in public schools. Okay. Uh, my goals started to uh, get away from it. So uh, from What were some of the distractions you had that um, kind of? Well, one thing was the women. Okay. You know, because there's no women in uh, at Hales. At Hales. Right. So uh, then there was, um, you know, uh, the peer pressure. Okay. You know, um, Let me being ask with you something this. about peer pressure. Okay. And, and maybe you can help some of the parents or young people that's watching understand. Nobody came and twisted Marcus' arm right. Right. to do anything. Isn't peer pressure more your perception of what maybe those around you may want you to do or what you think you need to do so you can fit in? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and you get out uh, uh, more so now because um, they have this uh, more uh, instant gratification now with the videos and if you do this you can do that you know mm -hmm. but people don't see it uh, the real the realness of it you know um, and peer pressure is just it's, it's tough it's tough you have to be mentally prepared you know in some way but at that at, at that age you're not so uh, you you uh, succumb a lot of the uh, peer pressure. Okay, so that that kind of so you, you kind of changed your goals and yes. Were you planning on going to college? What happened after you graduated from high school? Um, my my senior year, um, I had thought of going to uh, college, uh, Jackson State, okay. as a matter of fact, um, but uh, something you know the peer pressure. Um, I got straight away from it, you know, um, and joined the gang and uh, started selling uh, drugs and um, staying out all hours of the night and most importantly, um, wasn't listening to my parents. Okay, so you come out of a household with a mother and a father? No, a single mom, okay. but uh, stayed with my grandmother and grandfather and uh, fortunately they instilled in me good morals. Okay. But you still got away from yourself. Still got away from myself. <laughs> still got away from yourself. Yes. Well, you know, that's a part of a lot of people's story. Um, they kind of get away from themselves and, you know, getting involved. I, I, you know, sometimes we look at gangs. Gangs are like families. It's mm -hmm. almost like it kind of fills a void. Or they create an illusion they're going to fill a void mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until something happens. Yes. Then you find out they're not there like grandma and grandpa. Right. Or your mom. Or your moms. So, uh, so you didn't. You, when you graduated, you didn't go to school or anything. Um, well, like I said, that was the plan. But right. um, by me being in the gang and and and, and selling drugs, uh, the attention uh, strayed me away from the college, and so therefore uh, I started to uh, make money in the streets. So, even though you knew that. Like Malcolm said, 
education is is, is the passport mm -hmm. the freedom that you were t looking at what was in front of you yes um now at first when you started selling drugs was it because you needed the money or was it the lifestyle the excitement that was charging you up well it was uh a little of everything okay. um but mainly recognition you know from uh the women, your guys, right? Uh, the gang members, you know, um, just everything around you. It just it, it it overcomes you. It overwhelms you. You know, um, and, and certainly at that age as well. You know, uh, because How old you know. How you there about nineteen twenty? Nah, I wish you know. Uh, but I'm thirty seven years of age now. You thirty seven now? Yes. Uh, wow. Be thirty eight this year. Wow. Yes, and um, you get away from it all uh, because of. Like I say, uh, the instant gratification is right there, you know, so I got away from it. So when you, you wrote this book, when? In the past? Um, you told me it took you about three years to put it together. Yes, I st started writing the book in 2004. And you just started putting, because, man, you know, I like, see, if you notice, I'm not talking a lot about the book, because mm -hmm. I really want you guys to read this, because the way it's written, once you pick it up, mm -hmm. you notice I picked the book up, and I came out of here, and I started <laughs> reading some more, you know, and it kind of flipped through it and started looking at, 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 at it's the way it's written. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're talking to me. Yes. And and I like Thank that you. style. I don't know what they call that in literature or whatever, but uh, Thank you. this is something, you know, man, it, it's a great inspiration. Uh, and we're going to let you tell a little bit more about your story. I don't want to go into too much okay. details because I really want them to check this out because it's, it, this is great. So, as as time went on, you got into the game and got into the game, uh, getting recognition from the street. You know, as you do that, you make more money, clout get uh, heavier, taller. You know, um, and just uh, um, trying what I thought was living the life. Okay. You know, uh, but it really, you know, it's not the life as I look back on it today. Right. You know, it's 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 nothing. So how long did that that go on? It went on for uh, I started in junior senior, so I say about five years, five six years. It went on, and um, ultimately uh, dealing in the streets, and um, I got shot. I got shot four times, and ultimately it uh, put me in this chair. Well, a lot of people can't see you. Uh, we got a picture on the screen now. You stand up in a walker. Is that at a rehabilitation center where you stand? Yes, that's just me um, getting some exercise, letting the blood flow right, uh, strengthening my uh, body and legs up, and, trying, and getting my endurance. Okay. So you was were you in the wrong place at the wrong time, or was somebody intentionally trying to shoot you? Or um, actually. Uh, um, I went into, I entered somebody's house, uh, what I had no business doing, and um, got caught off guard. And as I was exiting the house, um, I got shot. Mm. Yes. And um, I mean, it, it, it was, it was, it was devastating. It was so devastating. How, how old were you uh, when that happened? I was 24 years of age. 24, yes. and you're 38 now. Yes. So we're looking at 14 years. 14 years. years. A lot of things have changed. Yes. Um, so how long did it take you to get back um, adjusted with this not being able to walk? You you had to, you were in a hospital for a while. I noticed yes. you shared some stories about that. It's like almost been, you know some writers. I guess all that reading that you did paid off because it yeah. lets you see how people write and convey ideas and. It just kind of like drew me in. Mm -hmm. It's like being there at the hospital, you know. Yes, thanks. Um, well, uh, when I got shot, uh, uh, the ambulance came and uh, rushed me to the hospital, uh, Northwestern, uh, and um, fading in and out the ambulance and took me into the operating room, um, cut me up, you know, my clothes off and everything, and. Um, it was, 
you know, it was real, but like not real because I was fading in and out. Okay. I can tell, you know, what I was at, you know, but it didn't seem real, you know. And um, uh, from the hospital, well, from the operating room, and I went to uh, recovery. Um, they had um, opened me up to see if it had damaged any internal organs, or anything mm -hmm. like that. And fortunately and blessed, I was that it did not. Um, from the hospital, I went to the Cook County Hospital. From the, from, from North Northwestern Western to what, the did Cook they County. find out you didn't have no money in there? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, um, unfortunately, it was uh, due to a crime. Okay. And um, and that's where you know they take their patients right. and everything. Right. Once so, they get them stabilized. Yes. So from the Cook County Hospital, I went to the Cook County Jail. Right and stay in the Cook County Jail for over two and a half years. Exactly two years, two weeks, and from the- You had a lot of time served by the time yeah. you uh, got your <laughs> sentences, right? Yes, pretty much. And um, from the Cook County Jail, I went to the uh, penitentiary. Okay. And served the remainder of my time of a 10-year sentence. Oh, okay. Okay, so they're gonna give you 10 years for a break and entry or? Uh, it was uh, aggravated uh, assault, uh, armed violence, my okay. fault, excuse me, it was armed right. violence. Wow. So I guess you got back on your, got your reading back on when you got. Yes, <laughs> yes, most definitely. Down at IDOC. Most definitely. But w were you. Um, okay. Um, had the inability to walk it? From, um, during my stay at uh, Cook County Jail, which it was not pretty at all, you know, because uh, just because you are disabled and uh, in a Cook County Jail, let me start there, in a Cook County Jail is the same as the rest of the divisions. Um, I was in Division 8, which was uh, a rehab slash uh, mental division. Okay. And um, people in there, they walking around with, you know, walk, uh, wheel, rolling around wheelchairs, walking around with walkers and canes, um, you know, uh, busted up jaws and right. you know things of that nature and um, um, just to give you like an example uh, one day uh, a big fight broke out and um, it was it was something I never could imagine you in know that division. in that division right so um, it, it was it was a story to tell with that mm. itself so um, I, I do not wish that upon anybody, you know, going to jail or the Cook County Jail or prison or penitentiary. Right. So, you know, one thing that um, I, I noticed in here is that at, at some point you decided to go back to school and yes. uh, at Olive Harvey and what, what were you thinking about majoring in there? Um, when I had uh, got out uh, penitentiary, I knew that I had to do something, you know, then at, with my life. You know, I didn't want it to go to waste. Okay. Uh, and um, so I uh, enrolled in uh, Olive Harvey City College and um, majoring in computer science. Um, eventually, you know, um, I uh, didn't take that major. Uh, I went to general education. Okay. Um, just because way technology is and you just have to learn so 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 you have to be really dedicated right you know um to the computers but as you entered uh college uh i found out so many things that uh that opened my eyes up and and, and it took me and i could have went that way with the computers or i you know could have went and got my general education or anything that i wanted to and put my mind to i could have done it mm -hmm. because college is an avenue uh to everything and it will guide you uh, me or any other person who wants to uh, go to college to anything they want to do in life. So it was um, like having an awakening. Yes. You, you saw things that you've never seen before and, and, and gave you a much greater vision yes. for yourself. So did you, did you uh, finish any particular program or well, while um, you were there? I got a certificate, uh, well two certificates in Cisco. Okay. Um, that is a, a computer, and um, unfortunately, 
I got all the way up into uh, not completing college, but I do com will and will complete college. I only have like 14 more credits to go. To go, finish up. So, and um, so I, I'm going to do that. That is one of my goals, uh, just like my book is, my book was. Um, but uh, college, it, it, it opens it opens you up. It opens your mind Now, when up. you first start, when you first put, did you sit down and say, I'm going to write a book, or did you just start writing, um, you know, because I often ask authors this, do, mm -hmm. you know, did you sit down and say, well, I'm going to,